Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream today. We're going to stay on about two hours or so, and we're just going to kind of work over uh, the portrait of um, uh, this is, uh, Mary. And I was, you know, I kind of thought I'd start from this point and give you a, a little bit of a peek into some of the process of kind of what I do when working skin tones, if I'm not trying to immediately just capture capture them via a la prima or, or any other methods. Uh, we're gonna approach this in a way that, you know, it's not really glazing, but it is, but it's not. And I, I just, you know, I think there's some, um, I don't know, sometimes I just think there's too much, people care a little too much much about it sometimes when really you know oil is, a, is an amazing medium so right now even on this layer here you're seeing some of the ground layer which was just kind of a burnt umber raw excuse me raw umber that I just rubbed into the canvas by itself and so there's still some of that color coming through here no matter what we put down there's still going to be some of this underpainting coming through it and to me, that's one of the most amazingly beautiful things about oil is that you have this layering effect that even something that looks okay, like this looks like it's pretty much the surface, you know, there's just light traveling through it. We're just going to add kind of one more layer to that. As we kind of bring it up, we add a little more color um, and begin kind of working in, into it. I didn't really mix anything up because I thought I would just roll with it uh, and kind of mix and talk a little bit about some of the colors I'm using and where and why. Today I'm going to be using um, Venetian medium to to apply this next layer. Venetian, Venetian medium is made by uh, Rubleb Colors and um, it's a gel medium of ground leaded crystal glass. So um, it's got some turpentine in it too. So you know it's it's kind of dangerous so don't don't eat it and and like like a lot of things uh these were methods and materials uh, that were noted um throughout history in fact uh, they have a little bit um yeah so it's based on research that 16th century venetian painters added powdered glass to their paint um so it uh it's, it, it's kind of it's fun because it's mostly transparent you know you see it down here it's uh, right now it's uh, like kind of milky uh, but when added to color in you know add, add a little bit of color to it in light ways you can kind of lay it on and and watch that uh, turn sort of transparent watch the light go through it it's pretty fascinating so we're gonna jump into this today and I'm gonna try to stay away out of all these cameras and I've got everything kind of set up in a way of I'm gonna knock something uh, inevitably and, and get in the way of my my own work at some point too um let's see here Rob nice to meet you all right uh, Bob Ross you know he uh, is one of those guys who um, has made the interest uh, of painting just in general, uh, yeah, very different thing. We're gonna do a very different thing today uh, than Bob. So hopefully uh, you can take what you can from Bob and you can take what you can uh, from this. So thanks for being here, Rob, glad you're here. Okay, all right, hopping in. For, uh, first things first, I like to just uh, um, kind of uh, prep my brush a little bit you know if, if I had washed it last you know a lot of times it's a little stiff and so I'll just kind of um, kind of get it ready and then uh, the Vene Venetian medium here you know it's it's like a gel and you can kind of see um, just how uh, sort of transparent it is uh, and and just for fun I've, I've mixed up this little bit right here um, I'm gonna go way out of order here I'm just going to put some of that into this Venetian medium and then I'm going to just lay it on top here and not immediately can you say oh yeah there's something happening there and so that's kind of why I said we're going to do a thing where 
we, yeah, we're doing some glazing so that we're really utilizing this underlayer. But in other ways, we're going to apply the, the paint more opaque where I'm like, ooh, I really need to kind of fix some of these harder edges. And I wasn't trying to, when, it, you know, my, when I would just had, I just had a black and white image up of what I was working on. And I was just trying to pay attention to the values. And a lot of times, if you want to intentionally do the glazing thing, you need to paint things a little bit lighter than they are. And I, my brain has a hard time doing that just kind of saying, okay, this is what I see, and this is how I'm gonna go about making it. Um, but we're gonna have some fun moving this around today and adding all sorts of uh, crazy stuff to it. So on my palette today, I've got, I'm gonna be using uh, lead white. So I've got another white out here. I like to keep um, titanium white out for like fabric and, and other things like that that are more opaque, but I like to use lead white for skin tones. Lead, lead white's uh, transparent and it has some of that uh, leaded kind of crystal. Um, it, it does, it does, can do some magical things. Uh, cad yellow, yellow ochre, cad red, cerulean, viridian, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, permanent. And then I have a few earth tones up here that I may or may not use. Sometimes they're easy because they're like, oh, they're already kind of skin tony. Um, but a lot of times I will avoid that. Usually the easy answer is not the, not the best answer because um, you want to you want to try to mix uh, skin tones where you can. All right, so that was just my little bit little bit there. Let's add let's add a little more of that just for fun, and you can see uh, kind of what happens here. So what we're seeing is we're seeing the start of a little bit of color on top of that uh, that gray layer, and it is almost you know not noticeable at all so if and if i and if i did if i did well you know i could come in here and you know we could make the cheeks a little redder you know so i could take if i dipped into the the cad red and you know we can we can lay in some of that and this is all so subtle and slow uh, that sometimes you know i me who mostly not a prima painter i i just kind of get fed up with and I'm like, no, no, I, you know, I want, I want the results. Um, so we're going to play around with it. We're going to do a little bit of both. There's going to be some areas where I think it'll work really well. There's going to be some other areas where it's like, you know, no, let's, let's get some opaque color in there. And for me, that's where oil is amazing uh, because what do you want to do with it? Uh, it can be applied in so many different ways. All right. So that was just a little bit. If all you had was like five, 10 minutes to watch something, that's that's that but if you want to kind of get into it kind of watch this come into being watch us slowly get some color on here then uh, stick around uh, we'll be on for about the the next two hours I like to try to keep it keep it under that all right so we already did some mixing here so I'm just gonna kind of keep going here um, I'm gonna use this as my kind of main um, kind of mid-tone skin tone brush if I need to go a little lighter or if I want to build up some more of these whites for like a, a, a third layer, I can do that as well. <laughs> Rob, that's very nice of you. Thanks, thanks for saying that. Um, it's a, uh, it is a long process. Um, and, and I'll, uh, we'll, we'll definitely go into that. I'm, I'm going to grab some of this green here, um, and, and put some of it down here in this edge. And we're just going to kind of keep, working working into um, some, some of these layers that I that I already have going it's way out of order than I than I normally do and to me it's just it's fun and, and I think that's one of the things about oil that's just so incredible is like you you, you never have to stop, stop learning how it works and what it does and and just find that so uh so incredible um i kind of wish for the sake of time i'd already mixed up some of my skin tones but i i sure surely did not do that so let's just see i've got a few things here and there that we can and we're going to really work into this uh you know i'm trying to still keep enough showing through of what i've done before I, you know i hate to I hate to lose lose that work um, and, and we're going to have to make some decisions too about where to, uh, 
maybe add in a little bit. So let's do this. Let's get this kind of light there. Maybe across here. I feel like I'm in this space here a lot. Yeah, like or you know, I'm kind of asking myself, hey, what's what's on my brush? What's what's the value or what's the skin tone on my brush and how can I just kind of use what's there? It may be hard to see, and this is kind of a thing, and I'm always a little hesitant to show or do on, on video just because you can't can't always tell what's happening. Um, but you know, this is you know, if I paint over this white, you can see that that white is still showing through. But some of these areas where I'm kind of deliberately picking this uh, this kind of value of skin tone and laying it in, it you'll notice it's almost hard to tell that you're seeing through that layer anymore. And let's see, let's 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 cool it off a little bit. Let's put some cerulean in that color mixture, and. It feels just a little cooler on this side, you know, but I'm kind of, I'm comparing, you know, the constant game of comparisons, kind of this side is war feels a little warmer, feels a little cooler right around here. Um, so we're just going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to bounce around. I'm going to make some decisions. I'm going to make some mistakes. That's, that's the best part <laughs> is making the mistakes. Cause, uh, you know, I always get it wrong, uh, in some way. And if I want to build up a little more light, you know, all I have to do is rather than using more medium, kind of this is my more my like a lot more medium, it's gonna be more transparent down here. You know, I can come up in here, grab a little more of this kind of paint, and just take it, uh, and you can see how you know, that's a lot, there's a lot more there. Um, and that actually can fill in some of those areas. So I can get a little more light. But then also, you know, I'm that, that opaque nature is is more prominent here than it is here and that could cause me some issues later when I'm trying to guess about what to mix in and what to move in all right we're just gonna we're gonna keep going I'm gonna keep jumping around so that uh, you have something to, something to look at here um, I'm gonna get a little more uh, cad red in here maybe a little bit of <clears throat> uh, burnt sienna so I can get kind of an orangey color um, I find, you know, the, the skull, uh, you'll have, it's sort, of, sort of rounded. And then, you know, in this area here, uh, especially centrally, it kind of heads back. And so you're going to get a little bit of a darker um, color here. And sometimes it's a little warmer. So, you know, I'm going to put that right on top there. Kind of let that uh, sink in and start to create a little bit of space there. And, you know, and looking at some of the other areas around here, I like to keep a couple of brushes active. Um, and they, like, I'd like a darker brush for building in some darker values. And since I already have some of the value established, you know, I can go directly into some of these. Um, just have to make sure that I have it thin enough. Um, and I can start to add some of that color that I see. And that, you know, of course, that's just mixing in with some of the lighter layer that I already put down. Um, but we're just looked a little warm on this side, I wonder. And then sometimes, you know, you're like, whoops, that's a little too much paint on the brush and not enough of the um, medium. So I can just grab some more of that medium, um, that Venetian medium. And and just work it on out here. The fun thing about this too is that the, these colors kind of settle into some of the deeper areas and can do some really fun things. All right. Um, I do find that on the whole, there's some cooler areas around the eyes, some warmer areas around the nose. Um, so, you know, taking some of these uh, and just kind of creating a little more warmth at the top here. The other fun thing about kind of doing the work ahead of time, uh, you know, and this being a little bit of a just you know, kind of sort of coloring it in, if you will, um, I can just paint directly on top of what I was working on before. Um, and even the darker areas will start to have that um, 
so it'll look to them too. Yes, wow, question, awesome. Is liquid white only used for Bob Ross style paintings? Liquid white? Um, is, is that something on his palette? Because, yeah, I'm, I'm here to learn too, because I don't know. Liquid white. I'm, I'm interested to find out if that is like a color that he has or, um, yeah, just, or maybe a lead white. Is that, uh, is that a, what is that a mistype or a miss, um, where did Siri come up with that one? <laughs> So here, here too, like I'll, I'll have a little bit of trouble because I, you know, I want to maintain some of these highlights, and um, I don't want to completely lose them. So you know, I might come back in here and take a little bit of the lead white, um, and mix it in here just so I can. And of course, this area is going to be more opaque, again hard to see here with video, uh, but I can add a little more light in that area too. Same up here as well. Yeah, the nose, that's something I want to get a little bit lighter in the front along the sides here. Sometimes things just get a little, a little out of hand. You're like, whoops. Um, all right. Now it's back with me. All right. Um, on his palette, he primes. I don't know. He primes the canvas with liquid wet. That's interesting. Is it? Um, let's see. Did he? Did he prime it? Sorry. So, uh, not as familiar. So you're, you're gonna have to help me out a little bit here and there. Did he prime it with? Is it still wet when he's working into it, or did he let it dry? Um, that'll be a good. That'll be a good question. Okay, so, so you're saying uh, it is wet. Uh, so yes, um, so that's one thing I could have done. Uh, so to, uh, that's, that's a great point, Rob. So um, working into wet, uh, rather than just kind of painting directly onto dry, which this, you know, this coat, this coat's all dry um, from earlier, and then I'm kind of working back into, because this is called, an, it's, like a, it's called an indirect method. Because uh, you know, the direct method would be kind of Bob Ross or, or something where you're, you're starting the painting, and you're finishing the painting all in one go. Uh, and or this time we're gonna let this layer dry, and then let another layer dry on top, and then I'm probably gonna do even another on top of it, uh, if, if if it can be believed. Where just you know I just want to do some, really fun things with these skin tones. So. Um, yeah, so when when you use like a little bit of a, a, a liquid uh, or you have a wet surface that, you know, it's like you're kind of working into that. And I could have like taken this Venetian medium and just kind of rubbed it all over here and then worked directly into it. 
um, and I th did, didn't didn't do that. Uh, but yeah, that, I mean, it could it could have been a, an approach. And I can move this color around, and because it's on the surface, you know, at any time too, I can just take a paper towel. If I didn't really like that move, you know, I could just do this and kind of take it back out. Um, some of it remains down in there, but I can change that. So there's all all sorts of ways it can be manipulated, uh, you know, at this point too. And then, I mean, and, and since you mentioned the, the liquid white white thing, uh, Rob, then the whole surface will eventually be, you know, wet and, and movable. And I could just take some paint and really move in, move into some of these areas. And mix up a little, just kind of a, a purple, I'm uh, I'm looking on this side of her face, and because the my kind of head covering is blue, we're getting some reflected blue light here, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna put a little bit of that in into into place, and um, just be really subtle. And then, then when I'm looking at it, I say, okay, then it gets warmer up here, so you know, I can lean in a little more into the cad red. And put a little in there. Since I've got that on my brush, you know, I'll, I'll kind of hunt around. Okay, where else is that happening? Um, you know, kind of see it happening in the lips. And that same sort of warmth. And so I'm just kind of going directly on top of what I've already done. Um, then I might select some darker and some more richer uh, warms, uh, warm colors when I get into here. And I'll, and I'll mix a black and I'll do a few other things uh, you know, kind of as, as, we're, as we're moving along. I love it. Yeah, direct and indirect method. Yeah, there's, um, and, and I think to me, what I just, you know, kind of a paint head. I just love being in the paint. Um, and and from your uh, and from your username, I'm, I'm guessing, uh, you know, you're you're a wood guy. So I mean, you you just kind of understand intuitively, like, oh, you know, I just you love the nature of these things, and so. I just love the nature of paint. And so when you kind of talk about different ways, different approaches, you know, just I just get excited thinking about, oh yeah, well, this can be approached like this, or it could be approached like this, or um, I want to make it a little more warm a little a little warm here in the in the cheek. Uh, that extends in here some. And you notice I, I try to I try to use you know these are still bigger brushes kind of moving big areas. Um, but still come across here the same side. Get a little bit of kind of an orange color for space down here. Kind of let that sink in some. And then sometimes I'll offset it. So, you know, that was really, it's kind of really strong. So, you know, I'll just kind of grab the opposite end of the color wheel. This is orange. So, you know, our blue opposite end of the color wheel. And I'll use that to neutralize, neutralize that color a little bit. 
and okay, so yeah, I'll just grab grab it directly here and put it on a new watch. You know, I can I can neutralize that really strong orange, um, make it uh, uh, more near neutral as it is. And you know, one of the most challenging things about skin tones is you're you're mixing these colors that are basically neutral, <laughs> and you're trying to find the, the the subtleties. And I think that's one of the fun things about this method is like you're, um, you can really kind of celebrate those um, as you go. And since I have some of this, you can kind of take a look down here, the, the our neck, the shadow in the neck. I might just get some uh, burnt umber, um, and just kind of work that in a little bit. So immediately, you know, I put it in, it's too orangey for me. You know, uh, all I have to do is kind of do exactly what I was talking about before. Have a little bit of um, ultramarine blue and, you know, do the, do the same thing. Just come back over it and, and find that, that in between. You know, and, and I've always, I've already, you know, the title of the video is you know, making the most of your underpainting. I've already done some work here, so I, I don't want to lose that work. Uh, I, I want to let it uh, inform kind of what I'm doing, and I want it to be a push and a pull where sometimes I just use it, where sometimes I kind of go back on top of it and I work it more, and, and kind of back and forth. Joan, how you doing? <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Great to have you. How's uh how's the weather in Dublin? I tried to get on a little earlier so you know I wouldn't uh, hit anyone uh, in, in their bedtime. <laughs> so Joan, we're doing a little differently today than uh, normal since since Joan your uh, Joan hangs out time um, now and then. Um, Approaching it a little differently this time, I've got uh, more of a serious underpainting in place, and I'm just going to try to work on some transparent color on top. Some people call it glazing. I I, I hate to use art terms because there's all these uh, like art police out there, and if I'm not doing it just right, you know they'll they'll come and get me. So uh, if I'm not approaching it in just the right way, and and again, I that's why I like you know Rob, you've been talking about. Bob Ross, you know, a lot of people will say things about him, be negative, uh, but he had an approach uh, and he learned how to use the medium in a way that made sense for him. And so that's always going to be my my encouragement is like learn learn how to use the medium so that it works for you and, and try new things like I don't always work this way, but and I don't always have, you know, a couple of these colors out that I, I put out this time. I just don't do that normally. Um, nothing wrong with that, nothing right with that. I just am saying, hey, uh, I want to shake it up, get some take, get some new takeaway, um, you know, do it on camera for crying out loud. So, you know, I can blow it big time <laughs> and, and just really have, have fun and, and, and do it with you guys hanging out. Um, so, so here we are, we're, you know, kind of making our way. We've been slowly adding some color, you know, I may be rubbing some out. You know, this is just one more layer in the process. I'll probably do another layer on top of this. Uh, and even after I get off the stream, you know, uh, I'll, I'll work, work at it a little more too. So let's see. All right. Um, yeah, the safety police. Yeah, uh, that's right. E everyone, um, e you know, everyone can be really opinionated about, you know, how to, how to approach this. All right, so uh, if you just joined, um, welcome. I'm I'm working in the these. I've got uh, I had my underpainting, uh, which was you know mostly a grayscale, and I'm working back onto it with uh, semi-transparent layers, um, uh, and I'm using a Venetian medium. It's available from Rublev Colors. They're not sponsoring this video. I don't have any sponsors. Hey, I'm willing to take on sponsors. You know, just talk to me. Send me a message, um, and. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're love to talk. Yeah. So I've got, uh, I'm slowly adding color into 
um, you know, almost, I guess maybe I'm trying to liken it if you're, if you're not familiar with the method, this kind of indirect method of painting, it's almost as though you're applying a, a thin um, watercolor layer, like let's say you took a coloring book and then you got your watercolors out and you just got a little bit of watercolor and you just painted it directly over one of the sections in your coloring book. You would still see the lines, but now you would see some color on top of that lines, on top of the lines. And I'm doing a little bit of that, but I'm trying to pay attention to some of the light values, some of the dark values that, that I had in place. And, you know, it's just a, kind of a little bit of the process here. At some point, which that point might be right now, I'll, I'm going to want to build up um, my darks in here because they, uh, a lot of times when I start, I'm thinking, um, I'm trying to compare kind of my darkest points to my lightest points and and just about everything in between. Like how, how dark is that compared to that? How light is that compared to that? Um, and so I... So I think I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to just hop in here. I'm going to, I'm going to get out a, I'm going to get out a, a round here. Oh, I've already succeeded in getting paint all over my hand. Yeah. What's the magic of oil paint? You never know. <laughs> and it does happen. Um, I've got a little bit of ivory black here. And so what I have already done in these spaces, I've mixed a, uh, a black and that mixed black is, primarily when I'm working ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, mix those two together. And uh, I like to start off with that because it's not, you know, it's not ivory black. Ivory black is, you know, in, you know intensely dark, um, but it allows me to really establish a nice dark. And so, uh, so when I'm looking here, I can kind of look and I can see, you know, the section right here, you know, um, back here, there's some areas that I can still make out a little bit of information. So I'm not going to use that entirely there. Um, I won't do that entire section, but I can at least work this in a little bit. And um, and then that, uh, that just helps me say, okay, that's my darkest point. Um, I'm going to look around for other points that I see kind of that dark. Um, and this is going on a little more opaque. Um, Although, I mean, I have a dark layer there, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm still using some of the Venetian medium, um, but you can see as soon as I apply this, it just goes uh, a little darker. And I will have to, while I try to solve most of the, like, drawing things that, you know, there's always drawing errors when you're working, and I don't care who you are. I tried to solve most of the drawing errors in my approach. Uh, approach earlier with the underpainting, but you know, I do see, see a few things I'm, I'm just going to want to play with and adjust to try to make a little more, um, uh, just a little more aligned. Uh, so I'm going to continue to kind of work around here. Some of the darker areas too, I see kind of in the, in the eye. Um, so I'm going to brace, brace my finger on this edge here, and then just kind of come in, find some of the little darker values, maybe around eye. Got my little, I do have a uh, elbow brace too, but I'm not quite at the right height to, to make the most of that just yet. All right. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm with you, Rob. People shouldn't get too uh, hung up on uh, correct methods. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh yeah, fat over lean people. Yep. That's a whole. That's a whole other fight uh, to be had. Yeah. I mean, just I and I, and I think I don't know. It just goes to show you that that the people who like really really care about it, um, you know, there's. A little, I don't know, take it easy. It's okay. <laughs> take it easy. You'll be all right. Um, all right, so I'm going to warm up some of these darks uh, here. And I want, so I'm going to use the same brush that I just applied some of these darker values in here. I want to really make some nice dark warms here, uh, warm colors around the mouth. 
And so I'm going to take, I've got uh, this alizarin crimson here, a little bit of my Venetian medium here, apply that on top. I'm going to take a little bit of the black um, so that it stays warm, warm and warm and rich. And uh, especially here on this side, the shadow side, you know, we can, we can begin really to just describing that space here uh, on the mouth. And maybe just where it's just slightly open there. That's giving us just a little more clarity um, in, in that space. Similarly, I, you know, areas where, you know, skin is kind of folds in against skin, you're gonna see these moments are gonna be really warm because light is bouncing around. So, you know, think about kind of the edge of this nose. Think about the, the two lips together here. That line in between, you know, is, is dark uh, and it's, um, it's dark, but it's really warm. And, and so, you know, I'll do a thing like, you know, it'll seem a little extreme, but, you know, I could take almost kind of a direct um, burnt sienna, which is a little over the top, and just kind of still delineate that. But obviously I'm not using it as black and as dark as this area was. And just kind of, you know, describing a little bit of that. And these are some of the areas where, uh, especially in the edges, you can really just pump up some color. Because um, that's what we're going to be slowly adding to what was essentially a black and white painting. We're slowly putting some color on top of it. And sometimes utilizing that underpainting layer and then sometimes just completely covering it up because it's time for it to change. Yeah, uh, the, the finished painting and in, in, in the, I mean, there's painting has such a rich history too. So sometimes, you know, you can get really serious about like, hey, I, you know, I want to paint like Rembrandt did. And, you know, so you get the guys who like, hey, this is, you know, this is how I, I want to want to do this. And I want this to be, uh, I want to kind of follow his methods because I want the painting to look that way. And yeah, you, you can create a certain look. Um, using uh, using his methods um, and you know I, I, I'm still I'm just really influenced still by um, enough by the impressionists uh, that you know I still like to work into it but then sometimes I like to use glazing and other techniques to change or shift color to dark or lighter or um, and, I, and I like just playing around and saying, hey, I've got the whole of art history at my, you know, available to me. Uh, and what, what people have learned about painting, you know, throughout uh, the ages um, to, to kind of only put myself in one camp. I'm going to get a little bit of a darker value on here so I can start to describe, uh, give a little more because most right now my shadows don't have some of the color that I put in here. So I want to get some um, richer color in the shadows, you know, because that and that'll immediately sort of warm, warm things up, make it a little more approachable. They call, um, you know, some schools call this the dead layer, you know, this uh, underpainting the dead layer. So, yeah, you know, I, and I get that right, you know, person doesn't quite look alive look, uh, and then you want to sort of add that life back into it it's another way to think about it um, so I can just slowly add some of that here Add it to this side of the nose where I just see a little bit of reflective warm light. And even on the edge, the, sh the shadow where it terminates here on the nose, it's really, really kind of warm. I can just begin moving some of those colors around that I, that I put down.
So this reflected uh, like light, I see a little bit of that reflected light uh, kind of along the edge of her chin here. Right now it's too light, it's kind of sticking out. So um, I'm gonna go in and uh, make some adjustments there. Anytime I'm moving in a, an area like this, I like to put my finger down, help brace my 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 move and and you can see uh, this is one of those things that happens you know I I made that darker and now that side of the face is making a turn and and starting to move back in and around it's so difficult um, and one of the reasons why people well portrait painting and things like that are so hard is you know you you encounter these moments where you know, that fix really needed to happen. And, you know, and, and it made a big difference now, like, you know, her face is, is is more rounded, simply because that one line was just slightly kind of too, too light. Um, so that, you know, that made a change. And, and this, this still reflects, it's really warm, that'll be fun. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. I'm going to take well, I've got just some of this on the brush. It's kind of darker brown here, using a little bit of raw umber. Right back on top here, just kind of working into um, the shadow. It looks warmer than I than I have it. Then it's kind of doing some some fun blue things uh, there too, so we're, I'm gonna just get a little bit of that edge green blue. Oops, didn't want it to be that dark. I'll come back. <laughs> we we can all rest now. D David's in the house. He's He's maneuvering the uh, David, my studio mate, uh, is is maneuvering the the ninja ninja challenge cords that I have strung throughout the room. Well done. I don't think anything changed. Uh, you 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 win the game. Yes, maze. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Rob. Uh, yeah, we're getting there. We're gonna we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna really really get there. Um, yeah, it's a it's a long process as as one can imagine. And uh, but yeah, I pr appreciate the good word. Even I like just adding a little bit of color to this edge, just kind of warmth. Um, and then seeing that okay, the shadow extends. So there's there's constant things I'm going to correct here um, as, as I go and and then you know I'll need to adjust I'll, I'll make it a, a decision here and there and then you know it needs to be be changed let's uh, let's get that reflected light in I was talking about a little bit of this and you know it's really warm and you know the this, this light hitting uh, like uh, the, the clavicle area there in the, the, the upper uh, chest, it will bounce back and provide a nice little highlight there. And usually that's pretty strong. So, you know, I'm gonna just kind of dive into that cad red. I'm gonna kind of lay that in there. And I've already, I've already done the work of, you know, kind of getting the values right. You know, I had to make some corrections here, um, but you know, it's really warm here. But as it moves, it starts to reflect the blue here, and so it gets it starts to get a little cooler. So I'll I'll pick up a little bit of that uh, purple that I I mixed earlier. Just kind of work that in. Color 
over there. It's kind of fun too. I mean, that like this way, a lot of the heavy lifting has already happened, um, and now you know, it's just it's, like I said, kind of sort of just adding color on top of of what was there. Really bringing bringing about that life. I, I will I will have to um, I will I will have to really uh, change some of these uh, some of these points. Like I realize, okay, wow, you know, really need to bring in quite a lot of color for the face. I really need to, um, yeah. So well, we're we're gonna get there. That's all I'm saying. It's fun too to kind of look in the hairline. In the hairline, you know, there's these kind of moments of, especially like right here. Where you'll find these rather than painting, you know, each each individual strand, kind of finding some of those color shapes that you see happening and uh, and working those working those in. You know, and I can I can work into what I just put down. You know, I can you know, drag into it. Um, kind of soften that edge up there. You know, and I'm looking at it. it's a little a little warm here. It looks a little cool there. So we'll we'll go back and forth on it. To I so I I put this down over here, but I'm noticing. This cheekbone is just a little lighter, um, and you know I want to I want to maintain that, and so come in here, mix up a little uh, lead white, and it looks like it stayed. It's a little cooler there, so I'm not going to add any other color to it, and I'm just going to kind of work into. See, it's still a little warm there. And take take it as it is um, just kind of build it up and because I already have that foundation um, Rob to kind of talk about what we were talking about you know I've got that foundation of you know wet paint uh, I can just work directly into it I'm gonna carry that on up here a little bit um, and since since I've got it on the brush, I kind of see some opportunity to do that a little more up here. Um, you know, and this is this area is kind of one of the most you know the, the lightest areas, right? We're getting kind of the sheen um, from the forehead, and so you know we can really. We're gonna want that to be light, and then a little, a little darker, and a little darker, kind of as it as it keeps going down, and then you know because this is almost all on the same plane. And then when you come down here, you're gonna catch a lot more light again because now this plane is sticking out. Well, just like just I mean yeah, look how the light of my you know so if I have a hand my hand like this, I've got my light here. You know as soon as you know, the light would slowly decay, but if I turn it this way, then all of a sudden it's catching all that much more light, and you know that angle and I think it's helpful to think about painting almost sculpturally you're like well I know I know the cheekbones gonna come out a little bit and then it's gonna turn in so it's gonna get a little darker those are all things um, you know a lot of painting instructors will say hey paint what you see paint not what you know but I think it's a mixture of both paint what you know uh, and also paint what you see and between the two if something doesn't quite make sense, uh, usually one or the other is going to be like, "Yep, this is this is the problem. This is where the problem lies." Uh, 
So one of the things that's happening right now is like I'm noticing that's on, on the channel here. I uh, made it a couple of years ago, but uh, probably the most watched video uh, on, on my channel. And I just kind of go over, hey, this is um, this is what I'm thinking about when I'm painting an eye. So, I, you know, I don't want to kind of really go into that, but we need to add a little bit of color uh, in here so that we have some life. Uh, it's feeling still feeling kind of dead. Dead up here. Get a little bit more color in. Underneath here too. It's good to keep the eyes soft. Um, you know, uh, that's one thing I didn't say in the video, right? That I know for sure. <laughs> I didn't mention that, but it's good to kind of keep all your uh, interactions with the eyes nice and soft. Um, if they're uh, if they're really crisp and hard, uh, they it just uh, sticks out more than it should, and you know eyes, you know eyes are lower than the brow you know, or farther back, and so you can you can make it a little softer. Um, it'll do you some good. I'm gonna get a little bit of that red that I'm seeing uh, in here. So I got some cad red on here, and I'm just adding that in. Um, to some of these spots that I think would be appropriate. Just give a little more. You know, and even, even in here, um, there's a lot of warm reflected light happening. And in the shadow here, and that might have overdid it. You know, that's it. That didn't work. And I promised you I would make a mistake. And I'm like, yep, that's not working. So uh, anytime that happens, you can rub it out. Uh, so you can, you can rub that paint out or you can take, I, I kind of like to mix in, you know, mi mixing in is, I guess, a little dangerous, right? Because you can, you can mix in something and it can get worse. Um, but, you know, kind of mixing back in a neutral, the, the, it's a complement on the color wheel. And so I'm just going to mix in, because this is still warm over, over here. I really haven't applied much color to this section. In fact, this is working pretty well at the moment. Um, I can really move into uh, this color with some of this kind of green. You see how this kind of greenish blue uh, here? Um, and I can just kind of work back into that red, neutralize it some, keep it keep it nice and soft. Use color elsewhere. I think I can see I can see some of it right in here, greenish, or greener in there. All right, question please. Yes. No lead white in England, huh? Um, okay, to, as, as to your first question, what do I struggle with the most? Um, well, I do think hands, yes, hands and faces certainly I think are among the hardest things to depict. Um, but within that though, I find a, a great deal of uh, satisfaction so that's that's kind of one of those things where I do it partially because of the challenge. You know, the, the challenge is so. Um, I <laughs> may sound kind of funny. Kind of do it for the thrill of it, uh, and you know, I'm I'm I'm. I know that there's something about the face where where millimeters matter, and when it goes south, it can go south really quick. You know, like for instance, I'm I'm already assessing some some nudging I want to do in on this eye here, just drawing wise, uh, and and so I, you know, I'm gonna try those later, but you know it can it can go south, and then you're like, what did I just do? 
Uh, so I think I like that the most. Yeah, hands, faces, feet. Um, those they're they're challenging in really good ways um, that, that make me. Uh, I don't know. I guess I guess uh, it's my my thrill seeking. <laughs> Rel relatively safe uh, thrill seeking. So can 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 I can I pull this off this time? Um, so uh, yeah, I think I think that's that would be my answer. Um, that said, uh, I because my training is mostly with the model and working from people and doing portraiture uh, and the like, I I really have a harder time with landscape. Uh, my, my mind thinks more in volumes and when when approaching a landscape, um, it's like, it's just like I, it doesn't quite compute. Uh, I, volume doesn't quite compute. And, and so it makes me, gives me a little bit of a, uh, a hard time. So I really wanna warm up this line I want to I want to keep the value. So you know, I've got uh, got a little bit of uh, uh, burnt umber on there, and I'm just gonna kind of drag that into this area here. So again, I don't want this to become a hard line. I want to keep it still pretty soft, but I want to warm that line up uh, because you know now it's just kind of looking a little it was look, looking a little too dead. Um, same, same on this side too, although this one feels cooler than this side. You know, if I look at the two, this is cooler than this, this is a little warmer, this is a little cooler. You know, painting is always this game of comparisons. And, and so that's kind of what I'm doing. Even as, you know, I'm kind of talking here, I'm looking at some of these spots, I'm like, ooh, you know, this is really kind of a lighter pink here, and I want to get this side of her nose. Uh, I think a little more correct. It's a little dark. So I'm just going to kind of, this is a moment where the paint is a little more opaque rather than, opaque rather than uh, uh, purely uh, transparent. So I'm going to kind of work in some of the side, add a little more color, lighten it up, um, and And notice how, you know, like how light does this side feel to to here? Um, and just kind of, you know, you can begin kind of softening that, lightening it. Um, and and again, I think that was a that was a good move. That was a good transition. But I have to carry that on up here too. It's not that warm. Um, and again, these are just the, it's kind of where, where you get lost or where, well, where I get lost. I just, I see the next thing like this needs to be changed here. Um, kind of around the nose. So I'll, I'll kind of work into this space. Um, and then, you know, that's. That's working more. There's a, there's a softness there. It's a little, little subtle, um, and 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 in, and in a better shape. Let's see. Oh man, the, the chat is, is is flying. All right. Let's see. Um, oh, there you go. The ROI. You just need to get a head, head over. Take a take a little trip. Uh, pick up some paint. Um. <laughs> oh, Rob. Uh, the, that very very kind of you. Um, but I, and and again, that's uh, I think that development is the um. This this like that's just something that really just takes time. Uh, where. It's a it's a subtle kind of looking back and forth. And again, I think if you if you were to like, you know, rewind the video back to the front and then take a look at each one of these little moves, you're just going to see it come into greater and greater um, uh, clarity. Uh, it and it's not something necessarily that 
you know any one movement you know does it just takes just takes time get a little bit of reflective light there i think i i went a little too uh too light um and also we get a nice light shining on this side so we're getting this nice strong red in this corner here because the the light's traveling through the the nostril and kind of landing on that other side. And then I just get distracted and I'll jump to another area and then not talk about it. Sorry. Just wanted to warm up some some of those um, spaces there. All right, I do want to go back in and adjust that shadow here on the nose, which does come around here. Um, again, that reflected light still a little too light, too or too chromatic as well. And I um, here, here's maybe a good good way to think about it, uh, Rob. I'll maybe this will be helpful. You know, color and I need to just make a one video about this I don't know that anyone would watch it, watch it but it but it would probably be well I know it would be it would be the most valuable video on the entire channel if I if I made it which maybe means I should make it um, is just the, the three attributes of color and kind of thinking about um, and so my mind is always thinking and considering um, those three things. So color has value. So when I first started, all we had was value. We had light and dark. So value just means light and dark. I, I heard you, you used the term value earlier, so I, you already know that. Um, then there is uh, chroma or intensity or saturation. Uh, you know, there's a couple of different ways you can put it. And that just means like, uh, for instance, you know, here on the palette, this is a high chroma or a very saturated red. You know, when we think of the hue red, um, we're like, wow, that is red. Now, um, if I mixed that red with a bunch of other colors and it still re retained the red hue, then we would be slowly uh, lessening its saturation um, and it would be a lower chroma red or lo low chroma red. Um, so that's value, that's chroma, and then there is temperature. And yeah, I mean, temperature is usually pretty self-explanatory. We understand, oh yeah, that's, or we get our, our cooler colors, our warmer colors. Um, and then we have some like kind of span, you know, so alizarin crimson is a red, but it's a cooler red. Um, and, and so, you know, you can kind of go back and forth there. And so, First and foremost, value. Value is the most important part. And a lot of times, primarily, I'm just thinking about light, lightness and dark because 80% uh, or more, uh, well, no, 80% 80, 80%, that's fair, is uh, all dependent upon value of your painting or whatever you're creating. If you get the value right, you, you win the day. Um, and, and so that's another reason why it's, you know, it's, it's kind of nice to uh, work and um, work in the grayscale first and kind of do the underpainting because that allows you know me or anyone else who works that way to not think about anything else but the value um, and then you can say yep hey i've got the values in place now you know just add, add color on top i think that's one of the benefits of kind of working in this method uh, and then and then you can kind of start to think about color saturation and temperature uh, but value is that uh, is the key always always I'm gonna add just a little bit of a warm red down this line there supreme paint company all right cool i i would love to be uh back in both of your next neck of the woods i got to one one of the you know kind of when i look back on, on my my 40 42 years uh i i had a wonderful opportunity to um 
paint for a gallery in Killarney. Uh, and it, I traveled to and from um, almost yearly and it was, uh, it was just really nice. Of course, you know, every, every season, right, has, has its, uh, you know, has its positives. And that was a, that season of my life I, I really treasure. And, you know, so, I went to so many places. Um, would visit uh, friends uh, in and around London and then uh, would just putz around in County Kerry, Ireland the rest of the time. And it was a, it was a blast. Totally miss it. Uh, just loved, love that time. Would love to be back. So I need to, I need to sell more paintings. <laughs> I think, I think that, that might be the solution. Maybe not. Or, or maybe I need to be uh, asking more for them or, or something. So, or finding the, the people who value them in that way. Um, that's been, I'm gonna get a little bit of a uh, little more of that uh, Venetian medium out. This is what I was using. Uh, Get a little bit of a cooler color here underneath this lip as it turns. Um, and it's okay. Sometimes, you know, like I, I made that mark and then I suddenly I lost lost that edge on the lip. And it's okay to lose your edges. Um, and it's not it's not the end of the world. In fact, I think when it's a little too crisp, um, it, it lacks it lacks life. I'm gonna get here's a here's a quick uh, here's a quick skin tone I, you know I wouldn't um, you know if you're painting a Caucasian I, I I don't like to think in these terms but sometimes just I'll mix uh, a little cad red cad yellow and lead white together uh, you know uh, to get a little bit of a skin tone here you can kind of see I think that's does that still only yeah, yep okay uh, and but you know a lot of things it's complicated, so a lot of things happen. Um, so you don't necessarily want to say, "Oh, well, I'm mixing skin tones, so I, I mix these colors together." No, that that's uh, equations are good up to a point, and then they're really no good anymore. So I'm going to just mix up a little bit of that, and uh, I want to just add some light. Um, to this corner. So I put it in, it's too orange. Um, I'm gonna need to neutralize it a little bit. And so I'm gonna just skin, select opposite end of the color wheel. I could also, I could also pick, take a little bit of Viridian here, um, get that in and see if we steal a little bit of Viridian and Yeah, Viridian is a fun color for skin tones because, uh, you know, we're always a little more green than we think, um, and it it can it can do some fun things. So I, I kind of like that what just happened there. Um, might use it again just to finish out this area up here above. Oh, and mayo. I, you know, I, I, I was so, uh, I, you know, I, I was pretty bad. Like, so I've always had, I've always had a little bit of a mind of like, oh, I've got a, okay, I'm from Kansas, you know, so dead center, um, uh, the United States. And I guess I just always have this farmer's mentality, even though I grew up in the city of like, um, you know, don't don't waste your resources. Don't uh, and and so I you know I would get to these I get to these places and then I, I just wouldn't really travel around much because uh, I would just be like well yeah but that'll that'll cost this or that you know and I've always been such a a frugal kind of man of the soil um, save everything 
uh, it's it's funny because it's very different than um, I would say a lot a lot of artists or or just art art in general you know it's, um, and so so I didn't I did not get nearly as far and as wide as I should have Joan so uh, I I can't attest to the light and mayo. Um, My wife and I still love watching um, the uh, uh, the Gaelic football championships uh, each year. It's it's a it's a blast for us, um, and I I think we're a couple of years behind. We we've not uh, we've not caught up on that in a while, but um, just good good memories of watching watching the final in twenty eleven. So it. If you're a dub, then you know you 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 would have liked twenty. You were happy about twenty eleven, and I know now I'm talking about like ancient history, um. But you know that's when, of course, carry 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 v Dublin, uh, and, uh, yeah the. I think there was a, there was a few last minute uh last, you know, last minute things that happened in that game, and uh and the dubs took it away, so. It was it was heartbreaking there in Carsevine, uh for for all of us uh, sitting sitting around and watching the game, um, but uh, again great memory uh, for me to be traveling that time to be able to enjoy and be in that space. Wow, it was great. Okay, heart belongs to Mayo. So, uh, how how does that work? Do, do you, uh, so so who do you, who do you cheer for? If you cheer for, you know, sometimes sports aren't that that big of a deal, um, which is which is okay. By the way, I'm not uh, I, I'm not the biggest I, when it comes to American sports. I I just didn't uh, I don't really follow anything, um, but it was really fun there to see. It was, it was fun to see the whole city of Karsavine get behind and get excited for the final. And um, it, was, it was fun to just kind of watch the energy of the town. Uh, and I uh, just, I loved, I loved that. So I don't know if you get, uh, if, you, if, you, if you have, um, oh gosh. Yeah, I gotta remember my term. I gotta get my term right here. Um, yeah, here, here, okay. I remembered it. I think so. Do you uh, do you catch any slagging? Is it slagging, right? They slag you because of your love for mayo. Is that? Am, am I am I remembering my uh, my Irish uh, vocabulary? Like I said, it's been over ten years since I've been there. Yeah. Let's see. Now, now I kind of always get to the point that you know, about an hour passes in the live stream, or or thereabouts. I don't know. I guess an hour, fifteen minutes, almost. Um, and I'm always thinking, okay, kind of what comes next in in my next forty minutes? Because man, I, while I love having um, you guys around, lo loving the conversation too, it's great. Uh, it's like it's like hanging out with friends. I appreciate it. Um, I'm always trying to think, okay, how can I kind of make the most of your time, most of my time? And so uh, I've been jumping around quite a bit, um, and you know, I I, I kind of need to keep doing that. Kind of wherever I, I see needs work, you know, moving in that direction, and then coming back. That's that's a lot lighter there than than I have it. But I also think it's a little, little bluer. So let's see if we can bring a little lead white. Mm 
enlighten this as it goes up. Oh no, you have to wear the jersey. Yikes. <laughs> All right, that's good. That's good. Nothing too serious. <laughs> that's right. I mean, and again, there, there, there's another. There's another thing. Uh, Rob and I were talking about not taking anything too seriously earlier. Man, if you can't enjoy uh, good banter with friends over things like uh, who who you support, then um, then I don't know. Then then we then we've lost a lot. If we can't have that sort of joy. So mixing up a little of, um, see a, a lighter kind of color, lighter bluer, and I think it's um, catching this edge a little bit here. And honestly, I'm going to sit here for the next uh, many hours, slowly just refining this out of just the pure joy of like finding some of the color, subtle color relationships and putting them in. Um, and so I, you know, that's just one of those things that's going to happen for, for quite some time. Um, and I'll, I'll just continue to refine it, um, until basically I, I get, there's a, there's a point where I say, uh, I think, you know, there's, there's not much else I can do. Um, and I'm not really nothing is like just sticking out and bothering me to such a great to degree that uh, I could say, yep. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and that's usually the point that I, I, I consider that, you know, uh, one, one of the common questions is, okay, how do you know when a painting is finished? And uh, I'll be a little, little cryptic here. I'll, it's just, it's just kind of one of those, it's like, the painting tells me uh, when it's done. And that's because there's really nothing anymore that bothers me to such a degree that it's like, ooh, I, I have to address that. You know, everything has been um, uh, dealt with. And now you, that, now that, that's kind of a tricky one because you can continue to uh, battle it out uh, forever, right? I, I mean, I will never completely achieve um, that that kind of perfection or, or, or what have you. Uh, and so there's there's going to be some point where I have to say it's 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 enough, All right, or we got it. And you know, those are usually the moments where um, I feel like nothing else is kind of barking at me anymore, and I can say ready, ready to ready to move on. And I, and I call that uh, I call that spot Gitmo, and that's uh, not not G E T M O, good enough to move on, and then uh, and then I move on. And there's always a there's always a a Gitmo moment. All right, hey, I am I'm done, and I'm, I'm gonna kind of move on and and go to the next thing. So I'm kind of always waiting for that. And depending on depending on my be deadlines, uh, sometimes that may be a little earlier <laughs> uh, rather than later. Hey, thanks, Joan. We'll see you. Thanks for uh, hanging out. Appreciate you. Okay, uh, Rob, all right, um, I only have very cheap oil paints. Ooh, yeah, okay, uh, that, that's a great, uh, thanks, thanks for saying that, man, that, that is an awesome uh, point and uh, a, good, a good just kind of conversation to have. Um, uh, ch cheaper oil paints have more filler in them and, um, and they're also, so they'll usually have more linseed oil, less pigment and more filler. And they take longer, to, they generally take longer to dry. Um, they, 
because they have less pigment, you know, you won't get the same richness of color when you're using them. And uh, you'll, yeah, you just want to kind of be aware, I guess, just be aware of that. Um, what I wouldn't, what I, here's, here's, here's what I recommend. What I wouldn't do is mix cheap oil paints with nice oil paints um, because of the pigment saturation and the pigment quality difference. So, I mean, some colors are stronger than others, but on the whole, you know, if I want to mix something up, you know, I'll mix a half and half, right? If I just wanted to mix. Now, if I were using, say, a, a really cheap cad red and an expensive uh, high quality yellow ochre, and I was mixing the two together, I would have to use the cheaper, I'd have to use maybe two or three times more to achieve an even mixture. And and I I did a lot of that in college because hey I'm in college I I have I have the money I have and I have the materials I have you know I I can't do much about it um, and uh, yeah there, there I had some really cheap uh, cad yellow medium and I just remember having to use so much of it <laughs> to uh, to achieve some mixtures and so I guess just being aware of that. Um, I, so I think it's it's fine to use in the beginning, uh, as long as you're using all of you know everything you're using is is it. Um, so just don't mix it with other uh, more expensive paints. I do think you'll be happier in the long run. It's it's like you know I I, wa I watch my kids uh, do watercolor here at the, you know in the studio with me sometimes when they're um, trying to keep them busy and we've got the watercolor going and. Um, I, I, it's, it's, it seems, it seems kind of foolish, like, oh, um, they really need, uh, some, like some arches or BFK Reeves or, or some sort of fine watercolor paper because, you know, the, the material is frustrating. Um, sometimes the quality of the material can be frustrating, I guess is what the, the would be my second point. Um, if you have a, if you're trying to watercolor on a really, uh, terrible paper, um, you're going to think, oh, you know, watercolor is no good. It's just hard. It, you know, it doesn't, yeah. Um, and so I guess that's just another thing to think about is like the, so, sometimes the materials can give you a false idea of what it's like to work with the materials. And, and I'm sure you could draw the same con conclusion in uh, in woodworking. And um, I just wouldn't be able to draw that. <laughs> yeah. But I do. I but I do understand. Like, hey, I'm trying this thing out. Um, sometimes you're looking at a tube. Here and you're like, wow, uh, like cadmiums or cerulean, you know, kind of depending on this lead white here, you know, some of these that are uh, a little more noxious and dangerous, uh, you know, you uh, toxic, excuse me, what I meant to say. Um, generally, they're a little more expensive than the earth tones, like burnt sienna, you know, it's pretty cheap, you know, just go out and find the earth and uh, mill it together. Um, but, you know, some of these others that are a little more expensive. It's kind of like a wow! I gotta, I need to spend, uh, you know, 20, 20 bucks or more, uh, you know, or or hey, or twenty quid to get a little, you know, thing about, you know, about this size. Are you kidding me? Um, and so I, I, I get that too, where you're like, I, uh, I, I can't, uh, I can't, I can't do that. And that's, and again, that's fine, <laughs> you know, to to harken back to our our. The, I feel like what's been the conversation of the day, like, you know, use the things you can use and, and learn what you can learn. You might have to unlearn a little bit. Uh, you know, if you continue with it, there might be some, oh, this is how, you know, this ends up working uh, when I have, you know, a little bit of a nicer brush or, um, in fact, I had, had some students, my first class I ever gave, it was like an eight week class. And I told them, I said, you know, hey, buy whatever, um, 
buy whatever brush set, you know, brushes, you know, they don't matter. It's, you know, it's no big deal. You'll, uh, it, you know, it's, it's not the, it's not the brush that matters. We're going to learn about the things that do matter. And, you know, I, I had a student who then, then brought in this pack of brushes and they did exactly what I said. They just went and picked out a brush set, but the brush set was so, uh, it was so bad that it was really harming what she was doing. And so I said to say, okay, well, I guess you can't use just any brush, but, um, you know, keep, keep in mind the materials do matter, but at the same time, using something somewhere in the middle is going to get you some of the same benefits uh, that, you know, using a high quality uh, product would use too. Uh, maybe just don't go to the very uh, bargain basement um, bin and, you know, do it that way. That'll, that'll probably save you a lot of headache uh, later. So uh, a company that I like, and I, I don't know if I don't know if it would it would ship, um, but and I feel like the price for quality is very good uh, for like pigment saturation and kind of butteriness is uh, Utrecht, um, kind of spelled just like Utrecht Holland, so uh, Utrecht, and this is primarily these are all Utrecht colors. Uh, I've used them since college. And I, you know, I have I have some some other brands. You know, I have some Winsor Newton, and I have some, you know, but even the Winsor Newton, I've got Winsor Newton, not Winton. Um, and so, you know, kind of using the the higher grade uh, paints with higher grade paints. Um, I'm not I'm not French, so I'll I'll butcher it. But you know, I also have some uh, Sennelier. I think that's how that's said. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, sorry, French uh, folk, if I, if I butchered that one. And um, again, it, but I feel like the, the Utrecht brand is I feel like great for what we're talking about here. It's a, it's that nice, you get a lot for your money, I think, personally. So, uh, so Rob, just just a heads up. I've been um, you know been doing these kind of live streams for oh probably a couple months now, and um, so I'm gonna finish you know I'll finish up this. We may jump into the hands uh, next week. Basically, you know there may be a few days where I just kind of do this you know for about a two hour window each day. We're gonna work on the drapery. You know I'll probably I may like do some of the other parts just on my own, but do the drapery do the hands, um, and maybe even come back and do a third layer on the face. Uh, we'll see. Um, so just kind of letting you know, it's usually about the same time. And if you have your notifications on, uh, it should just pop up that, hey, you know, um, I'm, I'm going live and uh, would love to keep answering your questions. That's one of the things that, one of the reasons why I just have it on is because uh, otherwise I'm just sitting here annoying my studio mate um, the whole time uh, talking about things that I think are important <laughs> and uh, I need to sit here and listen um, so so I think at least at least here I'm benefiting the world in, in some way Let's see. Awesome, awesome. Thanks for subscribing, Rob. Really appreciate it. So kind of looking at uh, my, my source, uh, one of these days I'm gonna really figure out <laughs> how to analyze um, the video quality so that I get a little better match. So obviously the video is kind of more yellowy um, and uh, the source photo that I'm working from there is uh, more, more blue, uh, more accurate. So I think I'm a little more accurate than my, 
than, than what it looks like over there, um, but you know, at the same time. Maybe we'll get that figured out someday. All right, I need to really deal with this. I think one of those things that is kind of stealing, um, got a little bit of, almost seems like a little bit of callo going on here. I just need to finish up this area right here. And so I'm kind of working into this transition, which, um, so I was saying, okay, looking here, I can say, okay, I think I got about that value and that color here. I think I've got that dark here pretty well, but then, you know, kind of what, ha what happens in here and how soft is this transition? Um, and, and just kind of working, working into that. Too, I haven't really put any color on the eyebrows yet, so they're still pretty much what um, what it looked like. And and hair is hair is a fun one because it's never quite what you think. Uh, and in fact, I I always have to paint in such a way that I'm like, oh, that's doesn't quite make sense, but I guess that is how it works. Um, There is, so to like, take a look at this eyebrow alone up here. Um, it's fairly close uh, to accurate, but there's some kind of blues and greens that happen in this area that are really nice to kind of get right. Some fun colors can kind of happen. So I take a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of viridian. Um, and I'm just kind of work in here add a little bit of color. Yeah, I could, I, I could, I should try to adjust the camera just a little bit. Um, I think that's, that's, that's a really great point. Uh, I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of using a newer camera I'm, that I'm not terribly familiar with, but I, I like the quality of it. Um, so I need, I need to spend some time, I need to get serious. Stop talking more, more, more doing, right? Like saying, oh, I need to do this, I need to do this. Just do it instead. So a lot of bouncing around, you know, I'll see these spots. I'm like, oh, it's kind of dark right there. Must be a little lighter. Oh. Come here. And that, again, that changes the face. Uh, that's why portraiture is so hard uh, because, you know, depending on where you put a shadow, <laughs> suddenly the person looks like somebody else. Um, kind of get back to, I guess my, if there was a focus for the video, um, working with the underpainting, you know, I, I have worked mostly transparent. Uh, you know, there is very little, if any opaque color, uh, on this, on this face right now. And really, so what you're seeing, the value part, or you're, you know, seeing the light and the shadow, that's still just what's underneath and not and not really i mean the color you're seeing you're you're kind of looking through like a colored gel almost and then seeing 
seeing that uh, that value layer underneath. Um, and again, I've already done the work, so like you know, let let that work, and I and I can continue to refine uh, on my way my way out. Okay, 30 more minutes. What is what am I going to focus on? Um, I might do a little bit of drawing uh, by, by drawing with paint. Um, so like I see some of these areas here. Oops. I'm gonna kind of kind of sculpt out that eyebrow a little bit. Bring the clarity to it that it just doesn't have right now. Too. If I want to bump up some highlights a little bit, I might take some of my, some of my lead white, some of the alizarin crimson, kind of create this sort of neon, almost this crazy neon pink um, that um, it can kind of go like you know so I'm looking at some of these areas that almost like it's like reflective and I can add a little bit of that in here I think that the, the big thing is like I'm not trying to uh, I'm not trying to use like a direct tube color I'm mixing a little bit so I'm not going to use just white I'm going to put another color into it so that it uh, so it works a little better. And then we can kind of carry this up in here. Goes up here and then up in and around the eye. And there was that dot on the nose I, I kind of covered over so I can kind of bring that back there. There's a, there's anti-dot on the nose people too. There's a, there's, there's another uh, special interest group painting, special interest group. That doesn't exist. Oh, but it's so satisfying <laughs> to put on. And then, you know, I continue to kind of use this up here too. Those are also the moments I, I kind of I stop breathing too. You know. <laughs> Question, yes, Rob. Thanks for being here. Thanks for asking awesome questions. All right, when you say you can refine as you go, do you mean you can adjust values if you need to? Yep. Uh, and how do you, how uh, can you adjust the value? I think we have to use, yeah. So yeah, I, I would, 
I would do that if um, I would just use opaque paint. So what has gone on top here is, yeah, mostly just straight, you know, I'm using a lot of white. I didn't really use very much medium and I just wanted to make that a little lighter. Um, and I, you know, and, and now I'm, I'm a little happier with it uh, just because those, those are the sorts of things that um, when, when that accuracy gets a little closer uh, I, to that, I immediately just have a greater affinity for the, for the painting. Yeah, great, great question. Um, cause yeah, cause some, cause some of these areas, you know, I, I haven't really had to do that in, in, in some I have. in here. That's all I wanted. Oh, there's a tad there. Sometimes you gotta be like, okay, where, where, where does it end? Where does it stop? All right. See if we can find another little section to work with. Uh, here, here's another little thing I like to do, and uh, this this can be done too much sometimes. Um, uh, is this is just like a little buffer brush? And strangely enough, it's someone did someone gave it to me. So when 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 you're a painter. People come across things in, our, in like estate sales or or other things like that. They're like, hey, well, you know, Vince is a painter. Yeah, let's uh, let's let's get that to him. And so somebody gave me this camel hair brush, but it's really soft. And so sometimes I'll just use it to kind of buff buff out a little bit. If I'm like, oh, that that edge is a little hard, I just want to soften it. Um, just kind of creates uh, you can really kind of do some really soft soft movement at the same time I don't I don't like to remove all the brush mark because to me that's part of the fun of painting is using the mark to uh, kind of describe the vault the volume of, of what you're working on so sometimes allowing that some of those marks to help tell us about the form uh, so yeah, this, this is kind of a fun tool to have sometimes where you're like, okay, I just need to clean up a little bit of my work. Um, and that, it can help do that. I'm gonna get this uh, light right on the side of the face. Don't feel like I quite have it. So I'm, and so when when I say that I'm thinking mostly value, okay? Like how how can I adjust uh, how can I adjust that value? guarantee if you if you went to 
and watch the last 30 minutes of every single one of my live streams. I, I pretty much just quiet, get quiet because I think, I think I've said everything. <laughs> I think I've said everything that I know. Um, and so then it just kind of gets quiet while I'm uh, almost, I don't know, painting like I would be uh, if I were just in the studio. Just bouncing around, finding the, finding the parts that I think need a little bit of attention and, you know, move it again, move it again, move it again. Might create this shadow just a little darker than he initially. See if I, see if I overdo it. it happens. Sometimes I, I think it's good to think about too. It's like, you know, I we we didn't need um you know tons and tons of hours to kind of even get to this point. Uh it, you know, it was it was very deli you know, deliberate, um kind of moving from space to sp you know, spot to spot, trying to really um make make the right decisions. Uh, early on so that you know it's successful add a little bit of almost direct alizarin crimson to that uh, some of these spaces here so that they're just a little more alive I think I've missed putting the color in a time or two there The mouth is really as open as I have it here, so I'm trying to just bring this down. And I do like a like a mouth that either sort of appears as though it's about to say something or has just finished saying something, so maybe just slightly, just slightly open. I think it gives some implied movement, um, an implied life to to whatever I'm working on. So there's. A little bit of my sometimes I'm focus, focusing on thinking how can I describe this in a way that this works a little more. I've got, I've got some light. Um, see if I can. So this kind of carries over a little more. It's. And the light starts to decay, I guess. Uh, maybe I really need to use something kind of like this. Again, this is another opaque decision here to 
And that's that, that kind of drawing choice. It's like, okay, every one of the, you know, all the little bits matter. Um, so like, if I'm, if I'm having a problem with an area, like, oh, that just doesn't really seem like it works, then usually I'm like, okay, well, that's because the, you know, we see a little more of the chin uh, on this side. And then sometimes I just spend some time <laughs> kind of bouncing back and forth saying, okay, well, I don't want it really to look. Um, kind of get hung up on one area which for right now is just the mouth I don't know why I'm just kind of focused on the mouth Lower lip needed a little more light. So could this side of the nose, I think. My, uh, my goal, uh, Rob, is to take this piece and um, enter it in the uh, International Portrait Competition, Portrait Society of America puts on each year. Last year, it was pretty exciting. Uh, I ended up winning um, second place in their uh, um, painting category because, of course, they have, you can enter drawing, sculpture, painting. Um, and so I... I'm excited to make another entry. Uh, it's it's due pretty soon. <laughs> I'm a little behind, um, you know, but I think I can finish it in time. And even uh, even if I don't quite get there, I'm I'm really excited to just for this piece in general. And I think it's going to be a beautiful uh, work that you know somebody um, will connect with and. Say, should be meaningful to them, either either in a emotional aid or um, well, I, I mean, I there's part of me I've I, you know, painted just about anything, uh, and so I while I love people the most, um, as long as I'm getting to paint doing okay.
Hey, hey, thanks. <laughs> Appreciate that. Well, it would be it would be nice to. Um, we'll, we'll we'll see how. Uh, you'll you'll be the first to know if uh, if it does. Well, I don't know what else uh, I would specifically do at this point. Um, to kind of make 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 big inroads, you know. From from here on out, it's these small, small, small adjustments uh, until until I just like I said, like until I feel like uh, I think I think I can't do anymore. Uh, so. I'm probably gonna call it at that one, Rob. Thanks for. I mean, you, uh, you are an absolute champ. I think you you were here the the whole time, uh, and I, I appreciate your company and your your great questions. Uh, I hope the time was valuable for you. And um, next week, sometime, uh, I should be on. Either I don't know if we'll do the hands. Uh, we're doing some of the drapery. Uh, uh, I can't say or know for sure, but. Um, we'll be on later uh, in the next week, and then the week after that, uh, it's uh, it has to be done if I'm if I'm going to enter it. So I'm going to have to really haul next week and get a lot accomplished. So uh, thanks for staying. Cheers. See ya.